Welcome adventures. I recently kind of wrapped up an analysis of all of the classes in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, right as a new one was released. And yes, we will take a look at the Kineticist eventually, but I do kind of like to focus on actual gameplay, whether that is uh, a campaign that I am in, I'm playing as that character, or at least playing alongside one, or at least seeing that character class used in some podcast or some Twitch streams or something to see how it really affects the player's experience and not just what it is on paper. So we'll get there. But in the meantime, let's take a look back at the video starting with the sorcerer and going through the wizard to see what you had to think about each. And we will start with the sorcerer, starting with what Blade Song said. Yeah, there are definite drawbacks, but there is so much flavor that can go into choosing your bloodline. Uh, Tinier 4 also said, but seriously, sorcerers are the best for flavor, and I'm sad that we'll have to wait for the player core 2 to get their update. So two different comments here about the flavor, uh, the roleplay hooks that you have as a sorcerer, and I totally agree with both. I mean, when you are playing a character whose magical abilities are innate in them, that came from birth, it's in their blood, that is a lot of roleplay flavor and hooks that you don't necessarily get with other classes, and I think that's why this is such a popular class in addition to the mechanics of the class. But I think that the just inherent innate roleplay really, really is a powerful feature of the Sorcerer. Some other comments here. D. Dave said, I think that the Phoenix one is pretty good, referring to the Bloodline. And I absolutely agree. If I was going to play as a Sorcerer right now, I would probably pick Phoenix. It's got a really cool focus spell. And then finally, Kryptonian Guest said, I thought for years that blood magic triggered every time a sorcerer cast a non-cantrip spell. Whoops. And yeah, it is a little tricky. The blood magic is activated when you cast your focus spell or a level spell or a rank spell, I guess I should say, uh, from your spell slots, but only one that was granted to you by your bloodline. So it won't be all of your spells from spell slots unless... I mean, you are a spontaneous caster, so you could choose to cast that spell from your bloodline as many times a day as you are allowed to per your spell slots. So you could use it quite a lot. On to the summoner. Scott Forsyth says, I'm going to say it with the first syllable emphasis forever. Gibbon said, it's Eidolon, not Eidolon. Anyone who tells you otherwise, it's wrong. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty glad to see people agreeing with my preferred pronunciation of this word. It really did make filming the video so hard because I like to say Eidolon. That's sort of how I learned the word. It sounds much better to me. It is technically incorrect. Uh, multiple sources I looked up said it is pronounced Eidolon, but it kind of seems, you know, language changes and it seems like most of the community wants to say Eidolon, so I think that's what we're gonna say. Finally, Mystery said, the cantrips and focus spells pair nicely with the Eidolon's physical attacks and casting haste for bigger fights is a force multiplier on the summoner team. And I do like that they pointed out here, the combination of magical abilities, casting cantrips, some attack, bonus, buffing kind of things you can do, as well as the martial abilities of your Eidolon. You really are two in one as a summoner. The Eidolon, though it is a magical creature, it is summoned, it's not really dealing magic, right? It's not it's not doing magical attacks. It is pure martial abilities. And then you as a summoner have the full range of magical abilities. So you are kind of a great two for one special. Now for the swashbuckler. Zaro Pevik said, I'm surprised that swashbuckler has 10 hit points. I always swear that it had eight hit points per level. Me too. There's something about it being a dexterity based martial that I think Oh, it's a little bit weaker, but it's got a very healthy 10 hit points per level. This does mean that, I mean, unless you have a barbarian on your team, your swashbuckler might be the beefiest player in your squad. McFatson said, funny thing about swashbucklers only using rapiers, the bonus damage from precise strike in your finishers actually means you may have way more weapon options than most classes. This is absolutely true. You can use an agile or finesse weapon, which 
does cover quite a lot. And because you have access to martial weapons as well as simple weapons, that's gonna be a lot of weapons that you can actually use and still take full advantage of your class. I sort of joked about the rapier thing because I think out of the two swashbucklers I've played alongside and one that I've listened to in gameplay, uh, they all use rapiers. I have seen other swashbucklers use different weapons, so of course it is possible, but out of the swashbuckler characters I can think of off the top of my head right now, I'm pretty sure three out of five use the rapier. It just sort of makes sense. It's what you often see depicted as the sort of choice for swashbuckling type characters in movies. It is a very decent weapon in the game mechanically, so I think it just carries over really well. And then finally on the swashbuckler, Andrew Davenport said, one last bit to bring up is that the Swashy is great at throwing bombs, and this has been awesome in the campaign. If you can't demonize the uh, demoralize the, the constructs, but you can throw bombs. And this is actually something I hadn't thought of too much, even though I've seen it in action. You do have access to martial weapons, bombs are martial weapons, and you are a dexterity-based class, which means you will be good at throwing things. So unless you have a dexterity-based fighter in your campaign, your swashbuckler is probably going to be the best bomb thrower you have. They will be more accurate than your alchemist even. Alchemist has a few other feats that will make them maybe equally good, but a little bit less accurate. It kind of evens out as a bomb thrower, but yeah, the swashbuckler really has this to their advantage and it would be a really decent way to add some ranged potential to your swashbuckler build. On to my probably new favorite, the Thaumaturge. Jay Lorax says, hands down my favorite class. I love how many options you have and the directions you can take. Yes, there are so many implements and then you get the combinations of implements and they have very different feels to them. Very martially, very supporty, very pseudo magical. Lots of great stuff that you can do with the Thaumaturge. True Lime Honey said in responding to Nick Jackson's comment about all that extra damage, I always thought of it more as a consolation prize for being multiple attribute dependent. And I totally agree. As a Thaumaturge, you are not strength or dexterity based, so you will be a little bit less accurate than other marshals. However, your strikes are going to do so much static damage because of all of the way that your implement uh, can add power to your strikes. And I think this sort of balances out. You might miss a little bit more often than other marshals, but when you do hit, you will tend to hit harder. If anything, I feel like Pathfinder is just one of the most balanced, just the math works out so well kind of systems that I have ever seen. And I think the way they've done that to balance the Thaumaturge math is to make it a little bit less accurate, make it multiple attribute dependent, but then give them some bonus damage on top of it. On to the witch. Andrew of Doom said, I played in a group that had a witch and really thought that uh, the character was just a wizard that cast primal spells, not a good look to have. Yeah, that has been sort of the complaint with the witch thus far that really, what is the difference between this and a wizard? As we will see, I'll talk about this a few times here, the witch is getting a major, major overhaul in the remaster, so hopefully that will change. Captain Pig Raven said, most of my witch players do have fun, but everyone admits that the options are largely lackluster. I house rule that all witches receive cackle for free. Glad you use that house rule. It is definitely one that I would recommend. Again, the remaster is changing the way that the witch fundamentally works. Their familiars are going to be able to provide a lot more mechanic uh, bonuses and options to you on the battlefield. So maybe cackle won't matter quite as much. I really do like the cackle for free. I kind of wish that is the direction that the witch went a little bit more, but you know, they are leaning into familiar, so I guess that's the way it's gonna go. Best Girl Jordan Fish said, witch changes and remasters sound like they can go wild. Yep, that's what we've been talking about. Uh, I think that the, I mean, they've gotta be the most changed class in the remaster, at least as far as I'm concerned. So. It's gonna be something that basically means that we're gonna have to go back and redo the witch video after we see what the full list of changes in the remaster are. 
And then finally, Toodles Lo- Noodles uh, says, a tricky part to which is that you have a whole separate customizable utility pet, which can be tricky to take advantage of. And I totally agree with this. I like familiars. You often forget exactly what you should or could be doing with your familiar though. As an alchemist, I did have an alchemical familiar and it was fun for kind of flavor. And I did use that extra reagent, which is just sort of a gimme as an alchemical uh, familiar user. But otherwise, yeah, sometimes you just kind of forget what your familiar is doing. Um, You can prepare your familiar with different abilities each day, but you might just sort of pick ones that end up not coming up in a day and you have this core class feature or in other cases, a feat that you've taken that just sort of does nothing for you. And that's not great. Again, for like the fourth time now, it looks like that will be changing, at least for the witch in the remaster. And on to the last, at least for now, the wizard. Phil Valdis says, also one wizard character I really want to make is a null wizard whose bonded item is something he crafted from the bones of his ancestors. So when he regains spell slots with it, he's kind of asking his ancestors for power and guidance. I think this is a super cool idea. First of all, I really like gnolls. It is just a great, very fun, very flavorful ancestry. And this idea is super appropriate for that ancestry. It brings up something I didn't really talk about in the wizard video, and that is role-playing hooks for the wizard. And I think your bonded item is one of them. As a wizard, you can choose what your bonded item is going to be. So it's going to be something that is very important to you as a wizard. So by choosing what kind of object it is, you are really telling a lot about your character. It is a great role play hook, and it is something that any wizard player should take some time to consider. On to what Nick Jackson said. He said, I also played a tank wizard for a short campaign although I took the Sentinel archetype and he was an evocation wizard. Basically just a very slow moving gunship that took a second to get into position, but would throw out fireballs and scorching rays once I was set up. That sounds super fun. And it sounds like a super good use of a wizard. You have access to the probably best damage spell list, the arcane spell list in the system. So if you get in position, like you said, and the battlefield is kind of around you, you can absolutely three action magic missile, three action scorching ray, two action fireball over there, and just kind of sit in place and just devastate everything around you, just kind of picking off targets left and right. If something gets close, well, it sounds like you were wearing heavy armor as a sentinel, so that is gonna protect you. Really fun build. And finally, Dr. Pluton said, I played a divination wizard during the playtest during a combat light session and highly enjoyed having many ways to gain information surreptitiously. I could still kick butt when kitted out for infiltration and intelligence gathering. I really like that you pointed this out, that with the wizard, it's not all about being a blaster caster in combat. You have so much skill training because you are intelligence based and you get a lot of skills. And then spells can also be used in exploration. There are some great uh, kind of social encounter, but also just uh, covering your tracks or locking or unlocking things, you know, all those types of things, invisibility, all, all that stuff that you can do to sneak around, figure things out. You are really, really good at that as a wizard, or at least you can be if that's what you choose to do. So thanks for pointing that out. I really like that we have one comment about being the kind of ultimate tanky blaster caster and another one about being the sort of discoverer of all information. Really fun options with the wizard. All right, again, thank you for all the comments. I really do like going back and seeing what you think of the classes, what you are doing with the classes. Uh, Seeing the different types of build options is really cool. Again, we will get to the kineticist eventually. It'll probably take me a little bit of time. I've read through it, I really like it. I kind of just wanna build a few out at least play as one maybe, or at least find one to listen to. So I think with that, I would like to say, if anybody is playing as a kineticist, let me know about it in the comments. Send me a link to your Twitch stream or your YouTube channel or wherever you might be uh, playing that so I can drop in and kind of see how it is working out for you. 
That is all for now, adventurers. Stay tuned, looking forward to more.